Hi everybody and welcome to Your City, Your County. I'm Bob Gray and we're very pleased to have with us two librarians uh, from uh, Algoma. Uh, first of all on my left over here is uh, Diana Vlies. Did Vlies. I get the name yep. right? Vlies. Good, yes. good, good. <laughs> She's the children's librarian and some of you may recognize her as she taught in the elementary school for what 30 years almost yeah 30? you don't look old <laughs> enough to, yeah no that can't be it Sweet. <laughs> we also have with us uh braylon uh, dempsey who's the young adult librarian yeah. and we welcome both of you today thank you thank so you. much for being here and we look forward to to talking to you thank you for having us yes exactly you thank bet you for yes letting us speak. Uh, when I think about it, I think of Marion the Librarian, uh, who was uh, in uh, The Music Man, and uh, you know, it was pretty quiet times back then, I think, but I think the library's kind of changed, hasn't it, from, from what, we've, uh, what we've been used to. I remember the old Dewey Decimal Classification System, and yes. I had a librarian in my, high or in my grade school who was always harping on that. Didn't like it, but that's okay. <laughs> now they have different ways of doing it, I understand. Yeah. What do they do now? Well, it depends on the library that you go to. Um, we still utilize the Dewey Decimal System in um, children's nonfiction and our nonfiction section. Um, the Dewey Decimal System is aged, so it isn't perfect. There are places mm -hmm. in, this, in the numbers that could be more inclusive to other um, like religions and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. there could always be an update, but we do use it in our children's nonfiction and our nonfiction. Um, but also like our fiction section is usually by author last name. So if you have a specific author you're looking for, you're not having to rifle through a bunch of numbers. You can just be like, oh, I need the newest McComber, Debbie McComber book. I I'm gonna go to McComber and find her. And mm -hmm. um, then we there's also, a BISAC, um, we don't use it at our library, but we've heard it's very popular, especially in big libraries. Um, what it is, is it breaks everything down by categories instead of the Dewey Decimal System. So if you were looking for a book about, say, a fire truck, you would go to vehicles and then you would bring it down to community service and then fire truck. And that's just mm -hmm. an example. I don't know if that's exact, but, but mm -hmm. that's kind of the system that other libraries use that make it more browsable, I think, is the term that they use a, a lot, because not everyone understands how the Dewey Decimal System works, so <laughs> if you want to be... user-friendly. Yes. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah, so um, right now that we use author last name and Dewey, but um, we always are learning other ways and integrating different things, like, for example, in our graphic novels, we, we sometimes will list it by popular things, so like, if there's a bunch of Disney, we'll label it Disney, and then by some of the titles that it's related to, or Marvel. Marvel's a huge um, cinematic feature in comic book series, so mm -hmm. sometimes we'll label a graphic novel Marvel and then say Captain America, just to make sure that the kids that are looking for it, they can find what they're looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah, and for for somebody like, like me, uh, it's nice to know that there's people like you who are out here uh, and uh, I can always ask. Yes, yeah. definitely. Always. Yes, we, we like to help with all of that. I, yeah. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the job is to help people find what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. so. Good. Uh, if you don't use Dewey Decimal as much, how, how do you, is there an electronic thing that you can enter now of some type? Yes, we have um, on our website a link that you could, it's called InfoSoup and you can get into there and search for what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And it will um, give you where it's located and how you can get it. And we, we also will help with that as well. People will come in and say, where are the books about motorcycles? And we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll show them where it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, have, you don't have to look it up, but you can. Yeah. Well, it must be kind of interesting for you working with younger children and stuff. Do you do like book readings and that sort of thing for yes, them? Yes, I do story times. Oh, cool. um, with, and because of COVID, we haven't done exactly the same, but I have had a lot of class visits too where school classrooms come in and we'll do story times with them. And mm -hmm. it's fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. 
What kind of hours do you have at the library? We are open from 10 to 7 on Monday through Thursday. On Friday, we're open 10 to 6, and mm -hmm. Saturday, 10 to 3. Okay. It seems like most libraries are closed on Sunday. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You need a break, too, after yeah. do. <laughs> six days of that, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> we like our Sundays, too. That's, that's, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I know there, in, in years past, and I'm assuming it's still here, that the Nicolay system is yes. uh, still, you're involved in that, and that gives you a much wider variety of, of how yes. to get books. Yes, we're in a group. We actually are partnered with 48 other libraries. So when you're doing a search in InfoSoup, you can look at what all of those libraries offer, and you can get materials from any of those libraries as mm -hmm. a patron of our library. Mm -hmm. okay. So I could go to Fish Creek and get a book mm -hmm. with my library card because mm -hmm. they're in our consortium. Good. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so do you find that a lot of people uh, do that, that a lot of people are going to the Nicolay system? Oh, yes. Um, not, I don't know how many go to the different branches like in person, but mm -hmm. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, we actually just came <laughs> from processing bins upon bins of books that are coming from other libraries or being returned that a patron brought to another library that need to come back to us. So okay. um, we often will have um, parts of series or some titles from an author, but we won't have the complete collection because unfortunately we are dictated by how much space we <laughs> sure. have. Oh, yeah. So sure. so there's only so much we can house so it, it's really amazing for our patrons to be able to come in and request things from other libraries because it, it builds our collection more than what we could possibly ever house in person so it's, it's really mm -hmm. nice. That's great and it, it, you, so really you have the resources of what you said, 70 40, or 40? 40, 49, 40, 40, 49 40, libraries. 49 are in our, libraries, yeah. yeah, yeah. Including us. Oh, so. that's, that's a wonderful yeah. thing. And Appleton is one of them, so Appleton's a fairly large one, and oh, that, yeah. that really great. helps boost our collection as I'm, well. I'm sure it does. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like the bookmobile that used to come by. Well, well it is, it kind is. of. It yeah. is, in a way, actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Right. We're kind of like the bookmobile for it. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, I understand that you made a presentation to the city council recently. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could kind of fill us in a little bit on how that went and what type of topics you covered. Um, yes, I think it went, it went fairly well. We were yeah. very nervous. Well, <laughs> certainly. Uh. But we wanted to share. Um, Braylon and I recently took a class, um, and the final assignment was to make a, uh, some sort of a presentation for your city officials about the benefits of the library. Mm -hmm. And as we were researching, we found so many things. Um, our director said, I think you should present this to the city council. Mm -hmm. So we, we took what we had found and gathered as much as we could and made a, pop a presentation about all of the different things that we offer that mm -hmm. we could think of. Mm -hmm. And our the main gist was it's more than just books. Mm -hmm. We don't just have books. We mm -hmm. have audiobooks, we have DVDs, we have um, graphic novels, magazines. A guitar if you a want guitar. to learn. Oh, yes. cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, in our, and, and if we don't have it, another library, chances are we'll have it. Mm -hmm. And if, if we still can't find it, one of our librarians actually looks for it in other systems outside of our system. So if you request a book that's been out for a little while and it's not in our system, she goes outside the system to try and find it. And we find most everything people are looking for. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to share all of the different things that we do. And you, you made up this wonderful oh. <laughs> it's <laughs> form. Yes. It's lovely. It's really <laughs> lovely. And I, I'm going to go through a few of these topics. Yeah. Okay. And maybe, you. you know, you can answer a few of the questions for yeah. us. For instance, a new offering curbside delivery for patrons who request it. How does that work? Um, pay, uh, well, when COVID first hit, we that was our first step to opening again all patrons had to get their books curbside. So what we did was they would call and say, I want to come at this time, and we gathered the books that they had and checked them out for them and brought them out to them at their car. Mm -hmm. And we have some patrons that have 
remained curbside. Some are people that have difficulty getting in and out of their car or, you know, have mm-hmm. different issues. Yeah. Some are because of because of being sick or uh, being worried about getting sick. Mm-hmm. So we, we package up their books and bring it out to them when they... Good. We just that's, have to schedule a time with them. That's great. So, yeah, it's been a great offering for... I, we still, like I said, we still have some patrons that take advantage of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to turn to you a little bit on this, uh, Braylon. Um, patrons can check out Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah. That was something we were really excited about. Um, I know a lot of us can't say that there's, it feels like there's a lot of positive that comes from COVID, but for the library, it definitely helped us find ways to adapt and almost upgrade what we can offer for our patrons. And our Wi-Fi hotspots are definitely something we were able to get grant money. We started with five and then um, they were going so well that our board approved us to get five more. So I think we have a total of 10. Um, there's a brief little um, contract that you have to fill out just because it is rather expensive equipment, but patrons can take the Wi-Fi hotspots for up to seven days and then they just have to wait a 24-hour period in between um, borrowings. But but yeah, they, it lets people take Wi-Fi home with them when we've had a lot of patrons that either have Wi-Fi that's not reliable at their house because of where they are unfortunately geographically in town, but we've also had patrons that have never had Wi-Fi and don't plan on getting Wi-Fi that, especially like during the height of the last election, that's how they got their news was they would borrow, they made sure to come on a Friday because they needed to know what the news was over the weekend and that mm-hmm. was what gave them access. And yeah. and a lot of people don't know that we, we have it for free available at the library. And I'm sure that for for the library to do it, you must have to pay a fee to do that, don't you? We do. That, we that do, yeah. The, do. the library the does. The library does, yes. but, but not the patrons nope. of the library. Right. Nope. Um, we, we have a few little things that we ask people do um, if they do take a Wi-Fi hotspot. Like, we do ask them to bring it inside just because our book drop can be merciless when it oh, comes I to things imagine. dropping yes, in. So, yes. so we do ask people to return it inside. So, but there's very little things that we ask in return for the for the Wi-Fi hotspot and it makes such a big difference in so many people's lives that we're we're so happy we were able to get the funding to get them and mm-hmm. hope more people will use That's them. That's great. Which yeah. certainly if somebody isn't familiar with it, it it brings all the electronics into your home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so so it gives you the connection. Yeah, anything that can um connect via Bluetooth can mm-hmm. connect to our mobile hotspot so a laptop a tablet a cell phone whatever you might be having at your disposal to connect to the internet it can mm-hmm. use those wi-fi that's, hotspots that's great now i have down here a few more things that, yeah, that yeah, you guys yeah. are experts oh. on now uh, i'm going to quiz you on digital library digital programs have increased 65 percent this year patrons usage of e-materials has increased by 57 percent what does that mean um Online, people can get, we have a a catalog called Libby. It's an app that you can have. And you can borrow books from Libby. So that's Mm -hmm. one of our our options. And from Libby, you can get an e-book. So you could, you get that book on your tablet or phone or computer, Mm -hmm. and you can read that book. It's an e-book that you can use. Or magazine or... E audio audio book. books that we have <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot of, and then recently we got um, a program called Hoopla, and mm-hmm. Hoopla also offers another opportunity for people to get movies and um, books and audio books yeah. and probably a lot of things I'm not thinking of because it mm-hmm. offers a lot of different things and people can yeah. get material without ever having to step in the library. All they need is their library card. Mm -hmm. So if you have a library card, you can access all of these materials for free. As long as your card is in good standing and Mm -hmm. up to date. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's incredible. And I, I, I know libraries in the past have had records and CDs and do you have those, uh, some of those also? We still have CDs in our collection, Mm -hmm. actually quite a few. And 
I don't know about records anymore, but maybe a few mm-hmm. libraries offer records. I wouldn't be I'm surprised. Not sure. yeah. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if there are some vinyls that maybe Appleton has some vinyls yeah. that you can borrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're probably I know they're are. coming back in fashion. Yeah, they, they are. are a little bit. They yeah. are. So yeah. potentially, yeah, yeah. there it might be more in the future. It takes me back to my old radio days. Yes. Yay! Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> when good. that's all we had. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and um, let me see. Um, you were also talking uh, briefly before we actually started the show, uh, uh, Braylon, about uh, apps that oh. you have apps. Yeah. And uh, how does how does an app work uh, with with your service? So um, Diana had actually Libby's one Touch of them. It. So okay. that was the first one we had. It actually originated as OverDrive, which it might be what more of our patrons are familiar with. And OverDrive is actually officially going to be sunsetting as my coworker Katie says mm-hmm. um, and, nice Libby, way to put it. <laughs> and Libby is actually it uses the same collection that overdrive did use but in my opinion and I think for a, most of our staff it's a lot more user-friendly than the overdrive system had been it's a lot easier to find the items you're looking for and access them where before overdrive had some extra steps and then we also have hoopla where um, Libby is a little bit limited on how what kinds of items you can borrow, but you get more options. So you can have 10 loans and um, 10 holds at a time on Libby per library card. But on Hoopla, which is our newer one, um, you can get five borrows a month for free. Um, it renews every month, but Hoopla also has TV shows, movies, music, mm. graphic novels that Libby doesn't have. So between the two of them, they're covering a whole lot of bases that um, you can access. And the way the apps work is you just download them like you would download most of your other apps. Um, Go to whatever store you might have on your device. I know Apple has the iStore and then um, Android devices have their own store. So you go there. It's all free. You don't have to pay any fee to download them. And then once they're downloaded, you just do a very brief login um, with your library card barcode number. And then right now there's a pin that's automatically generated that um, if you're not sure what your pin is, you can always call us and we'll let you know what it is Mm -hmm. and stay on the phone to make sure that you're able to get on that app. (laughs) Uh And on that note, um, people do come in with with their iPads or their phones and say, how do I do this? And we do help people with that. That's a big part. I think especially since COVID yeah. we have mm-hmm. had a lot of people come in with something and say I want to zoom with my yes. grandchildren how yeah. do I do this yeah. and we we help people with that as That's well great. we try because it is intimidating at first but once I've, you get it started, I've been you can into do it. a number of hotels where I go in and I go it doesn't work yeah. you know you go down to the yeah. desk and they explain things but you guys really I mean it's so much more than just being a librarian now. Mm-hmm. You've got to be an electronic <laughs> genius or... Uh, well, no. We'll never play <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. kind of verging up. In we that need to direction. be very and versatile. Yes. We're lucky because we, we help each other out. Mm-hmm. Braylon's very good at a lot of those pieces. Mm-hmm. So she's been very good at sitting with people and helping them in ways that I don't know if I could. But <laughs> we we you know we all help each other out with that too yeah. and learn yeah. from each other but yeah it's nice when people come in and they walk out and say I think I can do this now yeah. so that's, that's good success and that's yeah. really the the big reward is is not necessarily the answering of the questions but when somebody feels confident with their device that they weren't confident with before that's really the thing that we're gearing exactly. towards I want a patron to be able to walk out and feel like you know what I'm not intimidated by this app anymore. I'm going to be able to do it by myself. And you that, empower them. <laughs> we empower oh, yeah. them. Yes. Yeah. We yes. empower them we because empower them. Sure. that I've had many patrons through my personal experience that'll come in and they don't want to drive all the way to Green Bay to go to Best Buy and hope that somebody will have time to explain it to them without trying to sell them something. And I... I love that we're able to help them locally. We're, mm-hmm. It's a service that not many people know that we're willing to yeah, do. Yeah, right? that's wonderful. And you don't have to be a patron for that type of help also. Mm-hmm. People can come in and use our library without being a patron mm-hmm. and use our computers. We give guest passes out for people to use our, mm-hmm. our computers or our 
are um, they can participate in our programs without being a patron as well. Mm -hmm. So some people who are not residents but maybe are staying for a week can come mm -hmm. in and take advantage of some of our services as you well. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I've uh, paid attention to recently uh, that reading, I don't know, in a publication, uh, The Pulse or something, mm -hmm. where people were saying, I can't believe it that I came, you know, to Kiwani County or came to Door County or just this general area on the peninsula and people let me use the library and I'm not even I'm not even a resident <laughs> you know and you go yeah well of course you know but I guess we're used to that but that's yeah. that's a wonderful thing yeah. it really is very good so yeah we we're, we're proud of of that part of it as well that mm -hmm. we can help people that aren't patrons who can't be maybe can't become patrons but mm -hmm. Maybe we can help them in some small way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we we talked about curbside service. Mm -hmm. What about a program that you call Grab and Go Kits? Okay, yes. That was another program that we started during COVID because we couldn't have people come in. And we're still a little hesitant to have small children coming in to the library in big groups. Mm -hmm. So we put the program into a bag or a, oh. some sort of a container. Yeah. And people can come, anybody can come and take one of those kits and have a program. And we've done all different kinds of things. I don't even know where to start. We have things from young children through adults, uh, craft things, um, science kinds of projects, mm -hmm. math kinds of things. Um, we have a teen uh, one coming yes. up where they make their own fidget cube, which is a yes. popular fidget oh, toy. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Which yeah. will still be available for young kids, but it's geared towards teens because it's a little bit more complicated mm -hmm. in the instructions. Right. But just yeah. really anything I, we can think of. Tomorrow that, I'm yeah. putting out a Valentine heart thing where they can, they use the heart candy, the conversation heart mm. candy, mm -hmm. and they do experiments with them. Oh, cool. That's so, great. So I just stop by and eat some. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, but they, they'll take it and, well, they do it at home. I guess they do what they want with it. <laughs> Whatever you do with hope, your kid is up to <laughs> We hope that, we hope it's, it's beneficial to the, to the families, whatever, so. Yeah, I yeah. could stop by quite often on that oh, one. Oh, that'd be yeah, great. Well, that's great. Come on over. <laughs> okay. Well, you're nearby, too. You're yeah. near the city hall yeah. here. Yes. That would be we're handy. Right next door. We're connected. Yes. <laughs> um, another topic we talked about uh, before we got here, well, before we came on the air here, uh, was uh, genealogy. Mm. And um, I understand that you have some resources for that as well. Oh, yeah. We, um, we have quite a few resources. Um, if we were to cover all of them, I think we'd probably outrun the yeah. program that we have today. But mm -hmm. but just a few that we're really proud of are um, one thing that we have is the house histories, which is very unique to Oklahoma. It was the first one mm -hmm. that was available in Wisconsin, where um, we had two wonderful historians that tried to go through history in different archives and track each individual plot's history, wow. when it exchanged hands, who owned it during what time, when was it sold to this family, and those kinds of things, which I don't know many other cities that would have somebody that dedicated oh, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have quite a few um, re or local authors, local historians that have published books that are gracious enough to let us house them with no cost. So we have things like the commercial history of Algoma, which tracks all of the history of different industries that have been in the area and where they were located. Mm -hmm. um, we have our rare books collection where if there's something like the library used to be an old um, teacher's college. So yeah. we have some of the yearbooks from then. And then we yes. also have yearbooks from the Algoma schools for we try to keep it up to date. I actually yeah, went and visited the high school and they were like, oh, here's the new one. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Here we go. <laughs> Didn't know I was getting that one when I came, so bonus. But but yeah, and it goes well beyond. We have microfilm and two different microfilm readers. So if you're looking for um, the newspapers, we have different ways to access that. But we've had patrons that we can't even say are our patrons because they're in California, Texas, that have access to our online newspapers mm -hmm. um, just through our website. They can go through, I think, up to the 80s. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. digitally online. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, so you can do a search and find information mm -hmm. up to about 1980 something. I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure. I suppose sure the Al Goma Record Herald and mm -hmm. yeah, yes, and, uh, yeah, and, and uh, some of the other ones too. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's it's interesting to see what the history would have been of the newspapers even that served oh. uh, the area. I'm sure that they're, they're fun to look at. There are a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we, we often will get genealogy requests and what um, we have a our adult librarian Katie. She um, She's really good at genealogy. That's kind of her specialty. Mm -hmm. And she'll come and be like, look at this article I found from about the library while I was <laughs> filling out this genealogy request. And we'll be like, yeah. wow, how much we've changed as a community and as a library in oh, that yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I suppose you have, it, do you have it on individuals too? Or is it just more like homes or? For the access to it? Uh, no, I, I mean, when you're talking about genealogy. So, oh, so yes. if I had lived in Algoma, I could go in and see who some of my past relatives were? Yeah, we have various ways you could find yes. some mm -hmm. of that yes. history. Okay. We have all sorts of um, burial plots. Um, we don't have like certificates because that's more legally binding, mm -hmm. so we don't have the right to house those, but um, we have all sorts of cemetery plot um, books. We have some family trees that have been donated. Mm. Um, Collections of pictures that oh, were yeah. taken yeah. by oh, Harold wonderful. Heidemann. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Harold yeah. Heidman. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Yes. So we have yeah. we have a lot of gem mm -hmm. resources. I don't know yeah. how to say it. They're gems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's great. Yeah, he used to do a, a news program on on a station I worked for WDR, and uh, I remember him, you know, yeah. calling in his reports. That was yes. that was great. Yeah. Do you, do you still require masks at uh, at the library? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. We wear them out of respect to our patrons often, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we don't require them at yeah. this time. Yeah, We okay. did for a period of time. Sure. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and we offer a lot of unusual services that people like, our Algoma have, people have said, we like how we try to be there for people. So when people mm -hmm. come, we greet them for the most part, unless mm -hmm. it's crazy busy. Yeah. And people feel welcome, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we, We've enjoyed yeah. those kinds of comments. I, I don't know how to say it, but people have been so sweet. And about and, it. and being in a smaller community, I know you know I've I've talked with police officers that we've had on here in the sheriff's department, yeah. and uh, that's that's the impression I always get. And I think it's so wonderful that a community like Algoma and Kiwani and and Kiwani County all together is such a friendly place, mm -hmm. and you find that people are out there to to really help you. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. And businesses as well, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I wanted to share one thing we did in our sure. presentation. Um, we actually had a couple that came in and said they came, they decided to move to Algoma because of the library. Hmm. And it, it shocked me when she said it, but she said, you met our criteria for what we wanted in a community. Mm -hmm. And so the library is an amenity that not all communities have, yeah. and we, yeah. we offer, and she How was, special. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I put it in my, we actually put it in our presentation because sure. we were, it yeah. was such a, and yeah, you, we were touched. And, and when you hear from people like that, that mm -hmm. means probably more than going to work every day and, it does. and, and all of that because it it's really such does. a special feeling. You know, yeah. and it, to, everybody deserves that once in a while. <laughs> and to have yeah. somebody say, I notice what you do, I notice the effort you put in, and I notice yeah that it's not just a job that it's you're putting your whole heart into it that's what that translates to me and mm -hmm. that means a lot more than mm -hmm. a lot of other things could say yeah. yeah one final topic i'm going to bring up just very briefly um we hear a lot in other areas not necessarily in this area about banned books mm -hmm. um had any problems with that or questions or concerns from people we, we really haven't. Um, mm -hmm. Our library has a policy. If you question a book, we have a form that you can fill out mm -hmm. explaining why you think we need to take it out of our collection. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe anybody has ever followed through on mm -hmm. completing one of those forms. Mm -hmm. But we believe we should have access to all books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Parents have the right to say, mm -hmm. I don't want my children, but we cannot monitor that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we 
good. I hate to end on a serious yes. note. No, no, but I it's, really a, it's a very timely one. It is, it's yeah, very and important. we hear so much about it. It's, and you know. it's really in the news right now. So. Yeah. And yeah. I know it's been, there's all sorts of groups that we're part of as librarians um, amongst librarians in Wisconsin, librarians across the country, and it's a topic amongst all libraries right now because the question of censorship and what do we have the right to dictate what our patrons see and what they don't mm -hmm. see and the the truth of it is that we need to have pieces of our collection for any and all and mm -hmm. if you feel that one is not meant for you then that one mm -hmm. just isn't meant don't for you check you it don't out. you yes. don't have to have right. it and we would mm -hmm. never force books on people that they mm -hmm. they don't want but we also exactly. want to include things for our ever diversifying country we live in and sure. we want all patrons to walk in and feel mm -hmm. included exactly. Good. and I think you've covered that very well today <laughs> thank you. Thank I you. sincerely <laughs> do and I want to thank both of you this has probably been one of the fastest half hours oh. I think I've experienced <laughs> oh, thank so you. Thank, thank you both we've been talking to Diana Vlees who is the children's librarian and Braylon Dempsey who is the young adult librarian, both of them from the library here in Algoma. And yes. if you don't know where the library is, you tell them. <laughs> We're located on the corner of um, Fremont and 3rd, okay. and mm -hmm. right next to City Hall and right next to the elementary school in Algoma. Okay, very near the studio. You, yes, you must we, have just yeah, walked we didn't over. have to walk outside. Yeah. We are connected. Oh, so. that's wonderful. That's even better. We used the back door. We had a, we had a rough commute here. <laughs> We thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, that's going to do it for our program today. We thank you so much for joining us. It's always fun. That's been your city, your county. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. For everybody here and for Al Reinhardt and his uh, associate uh, Amber, uh, we thank you also. We never give them enough credit. They deserve They're credit. Amazing. They, they are. They are They're amazing They do thank thank you. so much. We someday we'll you. get. Someday we'll get them in here. Or we'll do the show from the uh, booth. We're going to interview you, yes, Amber. We'll, we'll yeah, that. I think so. So we thank you guys too. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you again. Take care. Bye bye.